went through the sum of formula, right? If I have psi of s plus t, then it's going to equal to what? Psi s cos psi t plus psi t cos psi s, right? Uh, you don't have to memorize that. Those going to be given to you. Just know when to use it. That's the most difficult part. Right? Um, today, we're going to uh, talk about different formula. It's called double and half angle. So double means instead of theta, you're going to have two theta. Right? You double the angles. So double is going to be two theta. The angle is going to be two theta, where half is going to split that angle into half. Um, theta over two. <clears throat> I'm going to derive. I'm going to derive. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to derive this one. The left one is just the same thing, because right? on the exam we're not going to ask you to derive it, right? Just on the lecture, I need to explain to you where it come from. So imagine I have. I want to know what happened to cosine of two theta. So theta, I'm going to split into theta. 2 theta, I'm going to split into theta plus theta. So here, cosine of 2 theta, I'm rewriting it at cosine of theta plus theta. There's nothing special there. How do I get from here to here? How do I get from first line to second line? What formula I used? Sum, right? Remember last time, that's the sum formula, right? Cosine of s plus t, right? Here, st is the same thing. So cosine theta plus theta is cosine theta, cosine theta, minus psi theta, psi theta. Well, cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta, um, minus psi squared theta. That's it. Right? So in, in trigonometry, um, usually they have like two formula at best, and from there, they just they just derive a bunch of other formulas, right? Um, so if you forgot, you can always derive it. <clears throat> so that is the double angle, uh, double formula for cosine. For psi, you can read it yourself, it's the same thing. Let's derive the reduction angle formula. Uh, reduction doesn't mean a half half angle. Reduction means you go from square to, you go from second degree to the first degree. Right? So reduce your degree, hence reduction. Um, <clears throat> so I derive, I, we just derived this, cosine two theta equal cosine squared theta minus size squared theta. Let's derive another one, right? Um, so the first line, I just rewrite the formula. Now, cosine squared theta, according to Pythagorean theorem, is equal to one, one minus side squared theta, right? Remove the parentheses. The one is one, negative side squared theta minus negative side squared theta, that's negative two side squared theta. So here's the coefficient is one, right? Negative one, negative one is negative two. There you go. You wanna solve for size, if you wanna solve for size, um, size squared theta, the first thing first is you add, you subtract one, right? So if I subtract one, so I, If I subtract one both sides, like that, one and negative one cancel. Then I have minus one. On the left-hand side, I have minus one plus cosine of two theta. On the right-hand side, it's just negative two psi squared theta. 
remember, I tr I'm trying to solve size square theta, right? So I'm, I'm going to isolate it as much as I can. Divide both sides by negative 2. The right hand side, negative 2, negative 2 is gone. So the right hand side, I'm going to return it into a left hand side now. So size square theta equal what? Negative one divided by negative two is is one half. Positive one, negative two is negative one half. Cosine of two theta. Do not cancel this. Why can't I cancel this? It's part of the, the function, right? It's part of the function. It's like it's like this. It's like square root two over two, right? It's the square root being the cosine, and then the two is being the two theta. Right? Um, you, you, if you say if you say cosine, it doesn't make sense. You have to say cosine of something. Right? Therefore, that is part of the function. Um, it's it's the one it's, it's the one person, not it's the one factor, right? It's the one person. For me, it's a good habit to put the parenthesis around the input, the angle, so you know that you don't don't cancel whatever outside it. If you want to write it as a one common denominator, you got that one. Huh? Yeah. Um, before I said reduction is from second degree to the first degree, I was wrong. I apologize. What I meant was you're going from double angle into a single angle, right? If you go from two theta to just one theta. Remember the square is being square for the function, not for theta. That's it, um, that's all. So the first one was double angle, uh, double angle formula. The second one, reduction angle formula. You can read this one yourself if you like. It's for the cosine square. Now the half angle formula for sine. So the um, D2 is for the double. And the last part is for the, for the half angle. <clears throat> I'm gonna let theta equal alpha divided by two. That's a little funny looking A right there. That's Greek, that's letter A in Greek alpha. Um, so remember, we just derived this one, right? All I did was I uh, bring it down here. Size square theta equal one minus cosine two theta over two. Um, instead of theta, I'm gonna replace with alpha over two. Alpha over two. I can cancel this two with this two. You're like, Mimi, you told me not to cancel it. Well, these two are part of the input, right? They, they, they're not, they're not, it's not like this. It's not like this. it's cosine of two alpha, all of that over two. This is different things. It is different than, it is different than cosine of two times alpha over two. The one above there, the input is just two alpha. The one below the input is the whole thing. So here you can cancel. Here you can cancel. That's why I say the parenthesis is important. It just tell you when will you be able to cancel. Um, so I cancel the two here with the two here. That becomes just cosine alpha. I want to. I want to know what side alpha over two, not side square alpha over two. So I take square root both sides. You want to take square root, you're going to put a plus and minus. Side squares take the square root, become just sine. And there's your half angle formula for sine. Okay, so notice that <clears throat> you go from half into what? 
into alpha, right? So if say if I have um, don't write you don't have to write this down. Now, if I have psi of sixty degree, if you apply this this formula will become what? One minus cosine of what angle now? What should be here? 120. Right, 120. Remember, this is half of that. Right? So so this is half so 60 degree is half of this will be 120, right? So that's that's what you I want you to remember. Be, be, be careful on the math on the math part, be careful with those. That's what people get wrong most of the time. They got the angle wrong. <clears throat> because because side of 60 degree, I can rewrite it as side of what, 120 divided by two, right? Alpha divided by two. So alpha is 120. Yes. <clears throat> huh? From the formula. A is the angle. So psi of alpha over two equal to plus minus square root of one minus cosine alpha divided by two. Yeah. I wanna know what psi of 120 degree is using that formula. So psi of 120 degree, I can rewrite it as what? No, I wanna apply the formula. Yeah, yeah. so I, I give you this, say I give you this and I want you to use the formula. So what did you do? You're like, okay, 60 degree is the same thing as 120 divided by two, right? So according to the formula, size of alpha over two, size of 120 over two, what is alpha? 120, right? So it's a plug in the formula. Where is that? We don't need that. We'll talk about that later. All right, so uh, here is a bunch of formula. Again, it will be given to you. But again, you, you need to practice. Right? It's, it, in math, it's like you want to build your muscle memory. Whatever you write out, okay, I know this before. I've done this before. Right? It's kind of like you're taking exercise, right? At first, it's going to get hurt. But after that, it's very easy to build up. <clears throat> Determine whether the positive or negative square root should be chosen in each application of a half angle formula. Side of 195 degree. This is correct, right? 195 degree, don't write this down. 195 degree is the same thing as 390 degree divided by two. Right, so alpha is 390. But don't write that down. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I want to, I want you to tell me what, what, what quadrant it should be. So I can choose whether my size is gonna be positive or negative. 195, what quadrant will be? Third, right? So is it gonna be positive side or negative side? Negative side, right? So I should choose negative. <clears throat> so that is quadrant three. Does imply psi of 195 degree is we're gonna choose a positive square root. So one minus cosine of 390 divided by two. Not negative, I'm sorry, choose negative. You can do um the rest of them. I'll walk last one. Do.
So cosine fifty eight degree, um, that's cross quadrant. First quadrant means cosine is positive, right? So we choose positive. I, I'm lazy. I don't want to write out the whole thing, so I'm just gonna say choose positive. What about tangent of two hundred twenty five? What quadrant that is? Three, right? Thank you. Quadrant three, tangent positive or negative? Positive, right? Because both sides and cosines are negative. So choose positive. And then the last one? Good, right? That's the fourth quadrant, right? You go in clockwise. <coughs> No. Yeah, you go you go clockwise. Mm -hmm. So choose two negative. So far, so good. That's just prepping steps. Um, number two, use the formula to write its expression as an angle of a single trigonometric function. So they they for for problem two, they want a single trig function. Either it's going to be sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, just one, right? Just one term. What do you think the first one's going to be? What formula is that? Yeah, that's 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 reduction. That's the half angle formula, right? And that, it looks like this one. It looks like that one. <clears throat> Here, alpha is fifty four. Yeah, alpha is fifty four. So alpha over two is gonna be what? Yeah. Size alpha over two. <clears throat> Someone do let's do let's do well, you can do you can do C.
this one is a bit more involved. I need to manipulate it, something. I need to change. Right now, I cannot simplify, right? I cannot simplify. But I need to make it into something I can simplify. I, I need to make it into something, time something here, and maybe turn this into one term, maybe, or, or products, right? So that I can cancel. So let's say um, side of 34 degrees, we're going to use a double ang angle formula. So recall side of two theta equal what? Let me, let me, I don't remember. <laughs> side of two theta is equal to two side theta cosine theta. Two side theta cosine theta. So side of 34 degree, can I rewrite it as side of two times 17 degree, is that okay? Let's take care of the top first. We'll come back to the, the, the denominator later. So here, theta is 17 degree, right? So it's gonna be equal to two side of 17 degree time cosine, I'll have to put that in parentheses, cosine of 17 degrees. <clears throat> like I said, I don't, I want to change it into some products. So I might be able to, to cancel that, the one in the bottom. Now let's take care of the denominator. Cosine of thirty-four degree using the using the double angle formula, and there are three of them. Unlike side of two theta, cosine of two theta has three formulas that you can choose from, and you I, you want you want to be able to choose smart. Um, I have let's see if I want to be able to choose smart, I gotta take a look at my numerator. I have side seventeen cosine seventeen. So I'm thinking right now I have cosine 34 and then the one. What I want to do, I want to remove this one. I need a negative one. Because I want to I want to be able to cancel the ups there. If I have one plus something here, I cannot cancel, can I? Can't, right? So maybe maybe I can remove that one and just all one term is all in the denominator. And then I can cancel, right? If you look at this formula, which one that allow you to remove the one? The last one, right? Because the negative one there, two cosine theta, cosine squared theta minus one. So remember, we have no. You don't have to write this part down. Cosine, cosine of thirty-four degrees. I can rewrite it as cosine. I'm gonna use the third one. So that's become two cosine of theta. So theta here is 17 minus one. So far so good. I'm gonna bring that down. Okay. So one plus cosine of two times 17 degree. I'm just rewriting that. One plus cosine of two seventeen degree is two cosine squared seventeen minus one. Now I need to cancel that. Maybe I'll write out one more. One more step. So after simplifying the one and then negative one, I have two size 17 degree, cosine size 17 degree over square 17, habit of simplifying. Can I simplify now? Cos size 17 on the top. with one of them in the denominator, because I got two of them. 
I can also simplify the two. Side of 17 over cosine 17 will be tangent 17. That's what they meant by a single trigonometric function. It took time. Like you cannot compare you to me. I've been doing this for a long time. Because I, I kind of know the form. Uh, you probably for the first time, you're going to get difficult. But if you do a lot of homeworks, you, you get used to it. <clears throat> D is slightly easier. Two. Which what part are you asking? The green one? Oh, two times. Two times, two times right? Two is the number two. 17 is your theta. Okay. Two times. Yeah. Maybe I put the. Should I put it like that? But you, you think it's X. <laughs> okay. No, why? Two times. <clears throat> um. For D, we want to keep the denominator the first time. Right? If I do this, uh, after that you get you are, you're gonna get your hand dirty before you you get to the final solution. Now two times tangent of thirty four degrees. Let me look it up here. What can I do? I see. Um, let me erase. Um, I'll, I'll use red. So I'm talking about the numerator. I I want to I want to change the numerator. Right now, it's two times tangent of 34 degrees. Is there anything that you can see there? Yeah, right. Um, the thing is, if you let 34 degrees be in two theta, that means theta equal what? 17, right? Two times 17, 34, right? But we don't want 17, do we? We have 34 in the denominator. So we not, we want to keep that 34. We want to keep that 34. So the, 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 the part in red that you see there is actually is the numerator of this part. Two times tangent theta, right? If you want to solve for two tangent theta, what do you do? You multiply both sides by what? One minus square tangent square of theta, right? One minus tangent square of theta, is that okay? Or better yet, you can put it over one. I like to do that way. On the right hand side, that one and that one cancel. So it's just equal to two tangent theta. On the left hand side, it's going to be what? 1 minus tangent squared theta times, let me move it to the left a little bit and run out of space, times tangent 2 theta. <clears throat> so I can rewrite the red part to tangent 34 degree as I do here. It would be what? What? No, just tangent two theta. Yeah. So it's okay. I just I just move it down. 
All right, ten, two tangent 34 degree. I'm going to rewrite it as according to the formula we just derived. So it's going to be what? It's going to be 1 minus tangent square of Thirty four degree time tangent of two theta gonna be uh, what 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 angle now? Thirty four or sixty eight. Theta is thirty four, right? So two theta is sixty eight. Let, let me recap. Let me recap. I want to change two tangent 34 degree into something else. I don't have the formula in the beginning, right? But we have we have the double angle uh, angle formula for the tangent. Right? And the top is look pretty much like tangent 34 degree, two tangent theta, right? So I want to solve for two tangent theta. All I have to do is multiply both side by one minus ten square theta. The right hand side cancel. Right? The left hand side becomes one minus ten square theta time tangent two theta. Now I have my two tangent theta. All I have to do is apply the formula into the red one, where theta is being 34 degree. So one minus tangent square theta is one minus tangent square of 34 degree, time tangent of two theta, tangent of two times 34 is 63. I'm gonna bring it down here. So one minus tangent square of 34 degree times, can I cancel it now? Single trigonometry function. <laughs> yes. So, uh, why can't you just plug it into like tracks or formulas and get to the answer? What is the formula? I don't have a formula. Yeah, I have tangent of two theta is not the same thing as two tangent theta. Yeah, is it the same thing? No, no, no. I I have two tangent of what I have is two tangent of thirty four degree, which is this one, right? Which is which is. Come on, which is this part, right? I don't have that. I have this, but I don't have that. But I need to change that. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is I still use the double angle formula, but I have to what to change it up a little bit. Yeah, because right here, tangent two theta, which is this guy, which I don't need, but I need this guy. So I have to solve for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I said, trick trick formula. They the one come after another. Uh, it's, it's not like, it's not me. <clears throat> Oops. Oh, I'll leave it like that. All right, move on before we, before we hide again. Number three, use a formula psi two theta equal two times psi theta cosine theta to write each expression in terms of an angle. Can someone tell me what should the first one equal to? Yeah, psi 45, right? So, so this is psi two psi theta cosine theta. So this is uh, two times two twenty twenty two point twenty two point five degree 
which is size of 25. For part B, I don't have the two in the front. I have the four. I want to turn it into a two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the four into two times two. Two times two and then continue size of 22.5 time cosine of 22.5. We done this part in part A. Right? Yes. This is your theta, yeah? Yes. Two times 22.5 is 25. What? Oh, sorry, 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 my bad. Two, it'll be four. Um, sorry, sorry. You're right, you're right. 22 plus 22.5 is uh, 50. Right, 50. My bad. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, my head, I was thinking something else in my head. <laughs> 45? Well, I can't do my multiplication now. 45, thank you. 45 degrees. Right, use your calculator. Thank you. For part B, we did that part, right? The one that I highlighted, yes. So why, why, why can you not have to like the two out of the side, 22.5 Oh, you can't. Remember what I say. Two times five. Can, square root of two times five. Can you pull, pull the two out and become two square root of five? No. It's the same thing here. It's the part of the input. It's part of your angles. That's why there's a parenthesis there. It, it's not side times two, right? It's side of. It's part of, like your purse. It's part of you. Right. Um, <clears throat> all right, so part B, we done the, the one I highlight in black there. So that's side of 45 degree. All you have to do is bring the two down, you time that, and you're done. I'm going to put it here. Let's see. Here's my notes. C, someone else do C for me. Let me write out the side of the Part side of 22.5 degree, cosine of 20. I'm, I'm bringing down the 182. Let me bring down the 18. Leave a little space in between. In order to convert into the double angle formula, I need a two here. I don't have it there. Not yet. So if I put a two here, I have to divide by two, so I don't change it. Does that make sense? Well, we did we did that part. Okay. I'm gonna multiply the bottom two with the eight, so one over sixteen. And for this part right here, we did that before. That's the size of forty-five. It's a matter of algebra, right? You just move things around.
Find the exact value of sine of 67.5 using the appropriate half angle formula. So they tell you what to use, half angle formula. Sine of 67.5, what quadrant would it be? One, thank you, quadrant one. So that means it's gonna be a positive, right? Be positive. Let me recall. You can look up your 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 formula there. Size of alpha divided by two. Instead of saying alpha, can I use theta? It's just it's the alpha look like a, it's a two. Right? So size of theta over two equal. You don't have to write this part down. You don't want to plus minus one minus cosine theta over two. Because size is in quad size sixty seven point five is in quadrant one. We're gonna choose a positive square root. All right, we're not done yet. Five degree. What's some what number divided by two? Sixty seven point five. All you have to do is multiply by two. Okay. Side of hundred and thirty five degree divided by two, right? So far so good. I just try to turn it into theta divided by two. In this case, theta is gonna be 135. Apply the formula equal. Now, positive square root of one minus cosine of theta. Theta is 135 degree over two. If you look it up on your unit circle, what, what's cosine 135 degrees? Thank you. So one minus negative one over two, over two, it's kind of like a fraction, I'm sorry. Root two over two? All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I have. One step at a time. Don't 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 skip step. One plus root two over two over two. Keep changing the two negative into a positive. Remember what I said? Complex fraction. Just one thing at a time, right? So I'm gonna turn that numerator into one fraction. So I all I have to do is multiply the, the one with the what? Two over two, right? I like to write my one as one over one and two is one over one over one. So the numerator is two times one is two plus the square root of two, all of that over the common denominator, which is two over two over one. Divide fraction, you flip, multiply. Two plus square root of two over two times one over two now. Two plus square root of two over four. <clears throat> One more. On the top, nothing I can do is rewrite it as square root of two plus two. So square root of two plus square root of um, two. On the denominator, square root of four is two. Bless you. Number five, you try one. Uh, by the way, don't try, don't, don't put it, I need to fix you try one, okay, there's a little typo. 
you try two, you try um, three is fine, but you try one, I need to fix it. Right after class, I'll fix it. <coughs> my, my advice to you, Tianchen, is odd function or even function? Ah, the only two even function is what? Cosine, secant, right? It's easy to remember. Everything else odd. What happened to the negative if it odd? Move to the front, right? So move the negative to the front, get out of the way. Just leave it there for a moment. Negative tangent of pi over eight. And I want you to focus on tangent of pi over eight first, right? The negative, you're gonna, you just kind of just, just leave it alone for a minute and then at the end you put it back, right? <clears throat> Again, using half angle formula. Number six. Find the exact value of trigonometric function involving double and half angle formulas. This is something you might have on the exam. Awesome. Given psi of t is equal to three over eight, and they say it's in quadrant one. As soon as they say that, I'm going to draw it. Bless you. So the, the, the angle here is T. Uh, psi is opposite over hypotenuse. So 3 over 8. Can you find x? <clears throat> the diagram theorem, right? x squared plus 3 squared equal 8 squared. x squared plus 9 equal 64. 64 minus 9 is 55. So x equal square plus minus square root of 55. Do I choose positive or negative square root of 55? Positive, right? Quadrant 1. So x is square root of 55. <clears throat> I want to know. Your answer is you want to answer. So I want to find psi of 2t. So psi of 2t using the double angle formula is going to be 2 psi t cos t. At this point, I, I hope everybody get used to the double angle formula now. Well, 2 is 2. Psi t is, psi t is 3 over 8, yeah? What about called psi t? What's called psi t equal? Yeah, thank you very much. So square root of 55 over 8. They want, um, they want, they want, they want, bless you, they want exact value. So, bless you again. Um, 3 root 55 over 32. You have to simplify it, okay? This is how I see this. Just tell, I'll just tell you what I see. The 2 and the 8. Two going to eight. Four times, right? So in the bottom, four times eight, thirty-two. In the top, three root fifty-five. Cosine two t. Cosine two t. You have three formula. <clears throat> you have three of them. Pick anything you like. Let's pick something that's easy for you. I'm going to pick the middle one. Because I don't have to deal with square root. <laughs> the middle one say 1 minus 2 psi squared theta. 
one minus one minus two. Psi squared t is the same thing as psi t all of this square. Yeah. Psi t is 3, 8, and then you square it. One minus two times nine is eighteen over sixty four. You can plug in your calculator at this point if you like. Make sure you know how to switch it back into fraction. So they want the exact answer. It's twenty three over 32. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, you try to You and Tianjin, you were two only, okay? You don't have to do this one. You encourage to try it, but it's not part of the you try. And please put the answer in exact value, meaning no fraction. Skip number eight. Doesn't help us much. All right, number nine. <clears throat> simplify. Again, simplify means we're not solving, right? We're just trying to, to reduce it as much as we can. Mm. The first thing you do, the first thing I see, hmm? uh, uh, sure, yeah, common denominator, um, but better than that. It's not wrong, it just make it a little bit more scarier than it should be. We are on double angle formula, yeah? Can I use double angle formula for the top? Can someone tell me what the equal to? Thank you. You. Just, just say out loud. Just, you remember it when you say it out loud. Uh, and then we right at the bottom. Same thing for for the second one. Very good. Yeah, you gotta. You want to choose. You want to choose the right one, right? So two cosine squared theta minus one. Can I cancel psi theta, psi theta for the left one? What's left is two cosine theta over one. Rewrite the you know for me, for me, I wouldn't know if it was me first time doing this, I wouldn't know which one to choose for this guy. I will know until until I'm done with this guy, and I'll tell you why. Um, common denominator, which is cosine theta, yeah. Now I know I choose the second one because I see cosine squared theta. Right. Um, equal to cosine squared theta. Minus two cosine squared theta plus one. Remember, you distribute the negative. Right? You distribute the negative. 
over cosine theta. <clears throat> The negative is just is belong to the whole fraction, not just the first term. Now I can cancel this and this. I know this lecture today just just you know, but you kind of know it. One over cosine theta, is, which is secant theta. Let me tell you, you, you try three and then I'll do number 10, we're done. For this you try, you need to upload as one PDF file. So showing all the work. Cause we're not solving, we're verifying. The left hand side for the right hand side. <clears throat> please do not solve, we, we verifying, right? I want you to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. <clears throat> Number 10. Um, now, naturally we pick the right-hand side, yeah? They look complicated. But actually the left-hand side is more complicated because Two theta is involved in double angle. You, you can expand that. So I'm going to pick the left hand side, which is two cosecant of two theta. And please do not factor the two to the front. It's part of the cosecant function. I don't have the formula for cosecant, so I'm going to change cosecant into psi. So one over sine of two theta. <clears throat> Double angle formula. Psi of two theta is two, two psi theta, cosine theta. What's left is one over psi theta. Can I do, write like this? Is that okay? Leave a little space. Hmm? What's left over is one over psi theta cosine theta. Well, I'm gonna split it into one over psi theta times one over cosine theta, is that okay? We are nowhere near the right hand side. Um, we need cosecant and cotangent. For cosecant, cosecant square. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that expression with psi theta over psi theta. I did not change anything. Okay, psi theta, psi theta is one. <clears throat> What is this one equal to? The one in, in the, the green bubble. Which is? Right, that one. The one in the red bubble, what is it equal to? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 psi over cosine. Tangent theta over one, right? I wanna turn it into cotangent, so it's gonna be one over cotangent theta, right?
cotangent theta equal one over cotangent theta. So are they reciprocal? Remember you flip x, y. We're done. We are done. So six and eight by one. Anything else? Yes. I have office hour today. If you have any question, please come see me. Bye, Zoomer. If nothing else, see you on Wednesday. <laughs>